on our trip going to Antarctica this January 2024. I hope you're as excited as I am. It is my favorite destination of all time. Um, and as you know, I travel quite a bit. Um, so I, I, I really look forward to sharing this time with you guys. And um, as we're approaching our dock party, which is supposed to be on uh, January the 5th, hopefully you can make it or we will record what happens and mail you your documents if you can't. And it'll be in Zoom if you can be there, um, you know, Zoom in during that time, 3 p.m. January 5th, which is a Friday, I believe. Um, but we just recently, Kelly and I went on the World Traveler, which is the ship that we're taking in Antarctica. It's a brand new, beautiful ship with excellent food and um, great service and uh, lovely accommodations on board and a, a terrific expedition staff as well as their crew. Um, I can't wait to share it with you. Um, internet was one thing that was uh, not so great. They actually have Starlink, uh, you know, the Elon Musk uh, little satellites that are low Earth orbit. And so there is good quality of internet, but uh, there's not much of it that you get included. You get one gigabyte um, and I'm working, so I need more than a gigabyte. So unless something changes, if it's the way it was for us, you get one gigabyte free and then pay for additional gigabytes. And there's some different packages where it's a little bit faster or more gigabytes, um, but it's not cheap. Um, I would say it's about $70 a gigabyte after that. And you just buy them, you get a code you use, and um, it's, it's very good quality. Like I said, it's not a lot. Um, but once we get back to Buenos Aires, you know, you can, we'll be in a hotel and you'll have good Wi-Fi back there if you just want to catch up and uh, save your Facebook stuff till you get back. I, I would recommend that. Anyway, uh, we went with Kathy um, Kasuma, who's the vice president uh, of sales at, uh, at Atlas. And uh, I worked with her at Cruise Planners many years ago. So she's also a friend of mine. And we got to meet uh, John Roth, who is the uh fleet-wide expedition um, manager. He was on this, this time when we went to the Arctic, he was also our expedition leader. Um, however, I don't think that he will be. I think he's going to be on the, the Voyager for uh, this winter, this fall um, in Antarctica. So, uh, but all the, all the expedition folks were great, and I'm sure some of them will be on board with us. Um, but Kathy just had a webinar kind of directed at uh, travel advisors, and uh, she had John Roach come on and talk about what to pack, what to wear, what to expect, as well as she talks about, you know, the polar class abilities of the ship, the stabilizers, what's on board, what's included. And I was like, wow, I think that uh, you don't want to watch all of that. So I cut out the stuff that I don't think you'd find interesting. And I left it in, um, in there so you get to hear um, questions and answers at the end and also even the expedition leader telling us you know, what to pack, what not to pack. So I hope you find it valuable. Um, it should take, you know, less than an hour uh, to do. And um, towards the end, when uh, they cut their video, I put in some photos of our time on board the World Traveler and also um, some photos of when Kelly and I were in Antarctica um, about 10 years ago. So you hopefully can enjoy seeing those while you watch this video. And uh, it'll help prepare us for the doc party because I think you'll have a whole lot less questions. And as uh, Sandy Rinker just pointed out, that's too close in to be making uh, purchases, really. So um, this way you'll know if you don't already have something what you might want. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll be glad to answer them as best I can. And if I need to reach out to Atlas, I'll do that too. Anyway, uh, happy Labor Day, everybody, and uh, enjoy the video. And as a reminder, we are an all-inclusive brand. So what you see on the screen here is always included in every single journey, from a free cultural immersion for every single voyage, all the way through to your food and beverage, including your alcoholic beverages, your gratuities, your fully stocked mini bar, lots of tan bath amenities, 24-hour room service, you name it, you got it. Everything you see on this screen is always included. So in addition to these always included items, I wanted to kind of uh, touch on some additional things um, that we will also be including depending on um, the itinerary that you're visiting. Well, 
Now our polar expeditions, and again, in addition to all of those always included items, um, you'll also receive uh, free private charter jet service on Antarctica and Arctic expeditions. We also include all of your enrichment lectures and destination briefings by our amazing expedition team, all of your fully guided Zodiac uh, sightseeing cruises as well as Zodiac landings are fully included in the price as well. You get the opportunity to do that polar plunge and jump in that ice cold water just from the platform of the ship and they'll pull you back out if you want to. Obviously that's optional. And we also provide you with um, your own parka and a zip out vest. Really nice, it's those bright green parkas you see on the screen, that is included as well. And you get to keep those and take those home with you. And then also um, free use of knee boots, as well as anything else that you might need. You have free use of binoculars on board. You have um, use of all the, obviously all the safety equipment. Um, anything that is needed um, to enhance your expedition experience is included um, on your Antarctica voyage or Arctic voyage with us. So for our 23-24 Antarctica expeditions, of course, we're going to go through, and I'm going to turn things over here in just a couple minutes to our guest speaker um, from our expedition team, Mr. John Rock. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about why uh, Antarctica is an expedition of a lifetime. We're going to tell you a bit about our polar class ships. Now, our ships were built for expeditions. Uh, we're going to talk about our enhanced Antarctica expedition process and what you can expect when you go on one of our expeditions. Uh, we'll give you some feedback to share with your clients about what you need to know before you go, talk about what happens going from ship to shore, talk about some of the wildlife you'll be able to see, um, and then we will also talk about of course, the environmental stewardship and the safety um, for everyone that's involved. We are very passionate about that, and we'll kind of touch on uh, what that means for you and your guests as well. Now, we mentioned that um, Antarctica is definitely an expedition of a lifetime. We truly do our best to, to make sure that we are focusing on giving you and delivering the best experience that you have. We incorporate all of um, our voyages have captain's choice. And what that means is exactly what it sounds like. The captain will actually look at the weather patterns, work with the expedition team leaders. Um, they will find the best location for you. One, that's safe. Two, uh, based on weather patterns, it, that will obviously determine where the ship is able to go for that day. And three, they want to make sure that you're going to see the most uh, amazing, spectacular views, whether that's glaciers and ice, whether that's ice fields, whether that's uh, wildlife that has been spotted in the area. And the captain actually keeps in touch with all of the other ship captains in the area and they share information so that people know exactly where to go. No two Antarctica cruises are ever the same. Now, uh, I mentioned earlier that we have our polar class ships. All of our ships were designed for the polar regions. They are polar category C ships. Their ice class is 1B, which means that they're able to navigate through the icy waters just fine. Um, and they are, again, designed specifically to sail in these regions and have additional stabilizers to be able to cross the Drake Passage with ease. Um, and so we are able to do so and um, are very excited to be able to share these amazing yacht experiences that with a luxury feel, um, but also be able to really um, take us to some destinations that um, can be just as beautiful as, as what you can imagine. Um, again, we have uh, less than 200 guests on board. And one of my favorite places on the ship is actually in that top picture of the screen. That's called Water's Edge. It's all the way forward on deck five. It's only 30 feet above sea level. You can actually go out there during scenic cruising. When you're entering the Lemaire Channel, for example, in Antarctica, you can see wildlife right from there. Um, it is an amazing place to go. It's quiet. It's serene. There's not a bad view anytime, well, anywhere on the ship when you're in Antarctica. But we also have these really cool things. We've got this bench that goes all the way around the bow of the ship right there on deck five that's heated. So if it's a little chilly, you can sit down, you can stay warm and toasty while you're taking in the sights and sounds there from, uh, from the ship. Now, each of our ships actually on deck three has what we call a mud room or expedition loading area um, where every single stateroom has your own assigned cubby. And that's where you're going to keep your parkas. That's where you're going to have your rubber knee boots that you'll wear and you'll put on. 
um, and you'll keep everything kind of there um, so that when you gear up and get ready to go on your expedition, um, you can change there and then you go straight from there um, onto that platform that will take you onto the Zodiacs and then have you on your way with your expedition team. Our Zodiacs, um, generally we put about 10 guests per Zodiac plus your guide um, and you have an amazing experience for there. And again, purpose-built ships, um, they were built for the sailing of the specific region and because we know um, that there are very stringent rules about sailing in these areas of the world. We have the most latest um, uh, up-to-date technology when it comes to our propulsion system um, that allows us to quietly uh, uh, visit these destinations without disturbing any of the marine wildlife and environment. Um, we obviously have the latest uh, technology and safety protocols on board and really um, feel very strongly about visiting quietly these different destinations but leaving them untouched. So, without further ado, I would love to turn things over to our guest speaker today, Mr. jean rock de Suzanne. He is our fleet expedition manager who um, has a wealth of knowledge um, about Antarctica. He's actually going to be joining World Voyager for uh, her first Antarctica season, so we're super excited to have him on board. Um, I'm going to let him take over and give us a little bit of his background and his experiences. Um, we actually just sailed together a couple weeks ago on World Traveler in the Arctic, so it was great to meet him in person. And I was actually on one of his zodiacs and um, got to learn about a lot of different wildlife and uh, the nature that was there, which was incredible. So without further ado, jean Rock, please take it away. Hello, Cathy. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Pleasure to have you there joining for this uh, webinar. And yes, it was a fantastic time we have shared together in the, in the Arctic. Um, I'm here just taking on uh, to give you some uh, deeper detailed information about Antarctica. And before everything, I have the pleasure to uh, go briefly through uh, the background and how uh, I have today the privilege to be the Fleet Expedition Manager at uh, Ocean Voyage, Atlas Ocean Voyage. I began my uh, expedition uh, initiation, I should say, on the Galapagos Island when I arrived there back in 97 first as the volunteers and eventually as uh, the official graphic designer for the Galapagos National Park. Uh, some great souvenir and achievement from this uh, period was to uh, have designed the logo of the National Park, for example. This had been a time where I learned a lot about nature uh, to eventually become one of uh, the expedition guides of uh, the Galapagos National Park. Working with uh, different companies, I eventually became an expedition leaders and expand my uh, horizon uh, when I started working as and uh, two leaders for uh, different companies. Uh, coming back to the ship, I eventually uh, returned to the expedition, uh, first to the uh, polar region, Antarctica, uh, becoming an expedition leader. And well, today I am the uh, expedition manager responsible to define the philosophy of expedition of the company and uh, ensure the consistency of the other fleet of the delivery of experience we are providing to our guests. And it's uh, as such that I am here with you today. So Cathy, if you can pass the next slide, please, and uh, begin to uh, the detail. The first things that uh, I would like to uh, explain to you is uh, uh, the team, a little bit how we are shaping a team of uh, expedition guide that are bringing in all the expertise that are required uh, as much for the quality of experience of our guests, we are definitely focused on to a delivery of interpretation, meaning that we are uh, dedicated to provide a quality of information to our guests to ensure that this information is on a way connected to their world, so they understand it and through their understanding have a better enhanced approach of the destination of Antarctica. Eventually, ensuring that the guests understand how the polar region are actually connected to our daily life and the importance of the balance of ecosystem in the planet. The expedition team is also shaped in such a way that we have uh, experts in all the different fields uh, to ensure the safety of uh, our activities. We are hiring some uh, high mountain guides because Antarctica is nothing else but uh, high mountain condition at the level of the sea. And since we're offering some premium activities like camping and kayaks, we're also ensuring to have some uh, a guide 
with the expertise required to uh, deliver those activities on the safest way. Great knowledge, great uh, information. We're also focusing on the lecture. The expedition is not only what happened when we are outside during the activities, but also a good uh, chunk of it is uh, uh, occurring when we are on the ship, delivering lectures, giving some uh, observation from the ship. We have a beautiful ship, which is well designed to uh, make some well watching, for example, which is one of the highlights of Antarctica. Next uh, slide, Cathy, please. This is a little bit uh, the different uh, uh, specialties, if we can say so, the kayak guides. We have two kayak guides for the next season. The team will be of a total of 12 uh, expedition guide that will be uh, at uh, the care of uh, our guests. Two of them will be uh, dedicated exclusively to the uh, kayak activity. One of the new uh, activities, one of the new specialty we are putting in are the marine biologists. We are actually working with some foundation that uh, are going to provide among the team some wildlife observer, especially dedicated to the well observation and well reporting. They are working with some foundation that are uh, dedicated to the uh, monitoring of whales in Antarctica and some other place of the world. And uh, this will be the introduction of our citizen science on board. We want to bring a uh, responsible approach of the visits uh, we are operating and uh, ensuring that our guests have the best experience possible with the deepest in-depth uh, in knowledge. Uh, about those many topics, and this is why we are pleased to introduce uh, to our team some uh, marine biologists. Ornithology is an um, essential topic in Antarctica. The penguins are one of the highlights. We always make sure that we have at least one specialized uh, photography is a uh, very important topic for our guests, and uh, we have actually some uh, team member that will be our dedicated photographers preparing some workshop for a guest of how to uh, take the best of uh, your iPhone or your cell phone. Uh, actually, today, we can see that very clearly. Most of our guests are not traveling any longer with uh, a big camera, but just with an iPhone, which is a fantastic tool to take some great picture. And uh, this is something we are also taking a, a lot of care of. History, culture, governance of Antarctica are some uh, fascinating topic because they are talking about today to so talking about international cooperation and talking, of course, about uh, the uh, needed care on uh, the balance of the ecosystem on our planet for uh, the sake of the uh, future generation. And this is also a uh, topic we are uh, including among our team to have some specialized to answer all the many questions of our guests. Polar meteorology, climate change, glaciology, those are so many topics also that come into this uh, concern of our modern day. And as I was mentioning before, we are bringing into the team mountaineers, hiking experts, as to ensure the uh, safety of all the activities we are delivering and also forecasting ourselves into the future's uh, activities we plan to offer for the coming season. Thank you, Cathy. If we can change the slides, that's perfect. So those are part of the activities we are offering. As we were just mentioning, one of the uh, highlight uh, and uh, included activities actually that uh, are part of our daily excursion is the Zodiac Safari. This is when we are uh, taking our guests on the Zodiac without any disembarking, just for coastal exploration on some highlight sites. Those are some fantastic opportunities to observe wildlife from very close. Uh, Antarctica is an amazing place to observe whales, and uh, we had some uh, quite astonishing opportunity to uh, have some very close encounter with some whales that uh, were just coming curiously uh, toward our Zodiac for the delight of our guests. So the Zodiac ride is and uh, fantastic activities. The expedition landing, on the other hand, is when we are touching the shore. All the activities are obviously depending on the weather condition. In Antarctica, the weather and the ice are the true master, and all our activities are carefully uh, taken uh, into consideration the weather conditions. It's uh, for a question there again of safety. Remember that Antarctica is, after all, a very hostile environment, so we need uh, to take some extra care all the time. 
the landing uh, some opportunities to uh, put a fit sometimes on the continent, most of the time of uh, some island of the archipelago of the peninsula uh, to observe the colonies of penguins and all the wildlife uh, we can enjoy. We have also our pollen plunge, which is a uh, surprisingly popular activities. Uh, we had, if I remember well, a work record last year of uh, 110 guests uh, giving a, a dip into the freezing cold water of Antarctica. It's uh, quite a fun activities. Those three activities are the ones that are included on the expedition. Aside from this, we also have the uh, premium activity, as we call them. The sea kayak is one of them. Sea kayak is actually also included the stand-up paddling and the paddling, which is some sit-on-top kayak. The real sea kayak are given to uh, some guests with already some experience. Those activities require some physical condition, and we do have a uh, simple but an essential physical test to make sure that our guests will be capable to board the Zodiac, the kayak, sorry, and come back on board the Zodiac. Uh, those activities are some uh, even closer encounter with the nature of Antarctica uh, by just being floating among the ice, sounding among you in a total silence. Those are some uh, privileged experience, I would dare to say. The camping is another activity we like to offer also. This is just an opportunity to spend a night, although night is not uh, very uh, common in Antarctica during the summer, since we are very close to the polar circle, the night and the obscurity is uh, almost an, uh, inexistent, but still having the opportunity to just spend a moment uh, by oneself in the silence being on this uh, uh, pristine continent is an uh, activity which is very much in demand extremely appreciated by our guests. So as for today and for the next season, this will be the activity we will be offering to uh, our guests, your clients, in our ship in Antarctica. All right, so as uh, I was mentioning, yes, there is a, a need to make sure that uh, our guests have the physical uh, abilities. Uh, Antarctica is not an extremely physical demanding destination. It's a cold environment. It's a rocky shore. We need to have guests with uh, a good sense of the balance. We provide them with some walking stick. Most of the time, it's quite helpful. We sometimes have to uh, step on some icy snow, sometimes into some uh, melted, very mushy snow, which makes some difficult stepping. But apart from this, the landing sites are relatively easy and remain on the uh, flat area. Some of them offer some uh, beautiful uh, view, uh, having a little hike of uh, some few hundred feet uh, to reach that view. But apart from that, the uh, demands on the physical activities in Antarctica remain relatively low. It's still, though, a good idea to uh, check uh, one's physical activities, uh, physical conditions, sorry, to be sure to be in the best shape to enjoy uh, Antarctica as a destination. Thank you, Cathy, for the next slide. Here we go. So here is the practical side and the preparedness for Antarctica. It is uh, extremely important to be well prepared in order to be sure that uh, all our guests will be enjoying Antarctica without suffering some frustration for not being well prepared. Antarctica, when we are navigating there, is during the summer for October up to late March, actually. Our ship are staying very late in the season. And when we leave the uh, peninsula, there, were, there are just a few ships. I remember last year, we are just uh, seven ships on the peninsula when we eventually uh, say goodbye to, the, um, to, to Antarctica. The weather in Antarctica is not exceptionally cold, unless uh, most of us uh, think. And the temperature will remain between the 30s, 40s Fahrenheit. So it's quite uh, acceptable. And as an instance, we mostly notice that uh, most of the guests tend to be overdressed and eventually get too hot, which is not a very good thing. So this is why it's important to have the uh, right um, advice for uh, being well packed and not being overpacked also. It is also a good idea to avoid using products that may contaminate the oceans. Our ship have some uh, top knock technology to uh, filters the gray and the black waters. We are dumping no waste into the ocean. However, the microplastics make their way through the finest filters. And this is why we recommend our guests to avoid taking the shampoo, all those products that are precisely using some microplastic. Our ship 
is uh, furbished with some amenities by L'Occitane and uh, we recommend our guests to simply prefer to use the one we are providing that uh, we know are guaranteed to prevent from contaminating uh, the ocean of uh, Antarctica. Uh, it's also important to make sure uh, bringing some uh, footwear and clothing that, if not new, perfectly clean. There is one of the procedures that we are going through every time we are traveling to Antarctica, which is the biosecurity, where we are just checking all our guest clothing to uh, make sure they have no mud, they are taking no seeds with them, and to prevent from uh, uh, introducing uh, disease, uh, uh, exotic species, to this pristine continent. And uh, this is something that must be prepared ahead of time, making sure that the guests are uh, packing into some uh, clean suitcases, some clean uh, devices, cloth, uh, clothing, uh, to make sure that uh, their visit in Antarctica is not going to have any negative impact and our expedition philosophy protect and ensure the continuity of the protection of Antarctica. Thank you, Cathy. So to go to the basic and the practical fields, what to pack to have a well-prepared luggage for enjoying Antarctica? Uh, as I was mentioning, the guests tend to come and uh, get overdressed. The temperature in Antarctica is not that hot. And actually, the parkas we are giving to our guests are pretty much all what you need, and included when you go for a hike uphill on the, uh, the packed snow, you get very hot. The parkas we have have two straps that allow you to carry them as a backpack. So it prevents you from overheat and sweat, because then once you're sweat and it gets cold, you can find yourself on a very chilly situation. So those parkas are fought for this, for the comfort of our guests. Personally, by my experience, I would say that just a simple a basic layer, warm layer, merinos kind of layers with the parkas on top is enough. It's always a good idea for some uh, more uh, chilly guests to get a, a simple polar layer, and this is more than enough. On the other hand, which is important, and what we have noticed several times, is that our guests do not have the proper pair of trousers for the expedition. We do not provide trousers, and it's important to recommend them to bring a simple but uh, well uh, waterproof pair of ski pants. The ski pants will provide the warm layers, they will provide the waterproof layers, with this just a simple legging beneath, and it's more than enough. But we commonly had some guests that came with some blue jeans, that came with some uh, leggings that are not suitable for the Antarctic expedition. So I would recommend you to take notes and make sure that your guests are bringing the proper pair of um, uh, trousers for the Antarctic expedition. We provide them with boots, so there is no real need for them to think about some hiking shoes. They don't need it, and uh, uh, they will obviously need also a good pair of gloves, and I recommend them to take two, because once the glove gets wet, you get cold. So it's a good idea to have an extra pair in your pocket to change it if they get wet, and a good hat, wood hat, simple, and of course, and a good pair of uh, sunglasses. And this is very important. There can be a lot of uh, radiation in Antarctica, and having a proper pair of sunglasses is, I would say, the most important piece of uh, equipment uh, our guests uh, should take with you, should take with them. Those are the recommendations regarding the uh, clothing. There are some other uh, recommendations I will uh, suggest our guests uh, to take with them. Some uh, good socks, of course, and uh, uh, also some, uh, to be on board, some uh, uh, more simple sport-like clothing. The ship is very cozy. When we go outside on the outer deck, of course, it can be very cold. The wind is really the factor that makes you feel the uh, cold of, of Antarctica. And when we're on the bridge, on the front, we commonly feel a lot of cold. So that's when you will be happy to have a jacket. And it's a good idea to have also some non-slipping closed toes shoes to be on the ship. This is something important. You know that the ship is a moving environment. As we say on the selling world, it's always very important to keep one hand for you and one hand for the ship. And of course, protect your feet. You can easily get hurt when the ship is moving, when we are crossing the drag passage, for example. 
Uh, I would also recommend uh, the guests their own. It's a good idea to bring them. And of course, if uh, uh, photographers uh, to take all their uh, photographic gears, this is one of the place uh, for taking picture. So those are the recommendations I can give you. If you have some more questions, we will be taking them on the background and we'll be happy to answer. Thank you very much for your attention, everybody. And uh, I hope to find, if not you, some of your guests on our ship for the coming season. Awesome. Thank you, jean rob That was amazing. We really appreciate hearing it from your perspective, from the experts, right, who do it for a living. So it's really uh, definitely something that we appreciate. We really um, are so grateful for your time today. I just wanted to touch on one thing when we're talking about what to wear on board. Obviously, you saw what to pack, and jean rob talked about all of the uh, different layers that you'll need and things that you'll need to bring with you. But it is, it is important to think about um, you know, obviously what you'll need on board the ship versus what you need um, shoreside when you're going um, on your expedition. Please don't forget those waterproof pants and recommend those to your guests. It's very important that they, they get those and they bring that pair with them. At least one pair. Sometimes people bring two pair for Antarctica for a longer cruise, but um, really important to have those because they're going to really want to make sure they have them. Sometimes we do wet landings, which means you have to step um, into the water with your rubber boots on, but you always want to make sure you're you're prepared. But in terms of onboard the ship specifically, it's not your typical cruise. Yes, we're upscale. Yes, we have this amazing service and um, great food and dining experiences on board, but it is an expedition. So our motto is to come as you are. Uh, we want you to just wear your comfortable winter clothing or your your uh, your attire that's appropriate for the, the specific climate in the 30s and 40s. Um, just around the ship. So for me, when I was in Antarctica and the Arctic, I wore leggings and a sweater. And, you know, those were my base layers. And I would put um, extra layers on top of that when we um, went into the Zodiacs. Um, but I wore that same base layer around the ship. So you don't have to dress up. There are no formal nights, um, just some trousers and a comfortable sweater or something uh, that's, again, appropriate for that type of climate is perfectly fine. So you don't have to worry about changing for dinner and being dressy and that type of thing. Now, we always do some sort of a captain's reception on board where we introduce the officers. But again, there's no need <laughs> for you to dress up and to, to feel like you need to bring formal attire and high heels and all that thing, all that kind of stuff for the ladies. It's not necessary. Um, it's just a come as you are type attire. And again, we want you to really focus on the experience um, in the um, Zodiacs and for your expeditions and really focus on what you're seeing and not have to worry so much about what you're wearing in the evenings. So is there any specific questions that you want us to address? Um, we could do a, maybe one or two really quick uh, while yes. we've got everyone. Awesome. Kathy, there is. In fact, they're directed towards Jean Roche, and I have sent them over to him, and I'm going to ask him if he would quickly join. There was a question about traversing the Drake Passage and how best to prepare their clients for that uh, region. So, Jean Rock, if you could take that. Yes, thank you very much, Jason. So, regarding the Drake Passage, I know that this is sometimes um, the uh, point that uh, pushed the guests not to go to Antarctica. However, you should not be too worried about the Drake Passage uh, for uh, several reasons. The first reason is that uh, we are always taking a lot of care of uh, the crossing the Drake, checking the weather forecast, and uh, if the wave goes uh, uh, bigger than the 15 feet high, we just don't go. It's uh, not suitable, it doesn't worth it. Uh, second, the seasickness motion is most of all psychological, much more than physical, and this is something important to address. So the best way to get ready for the drag passage, I would say, is just to relax and not worry too much about it. The other thing is that our ship are incredible, I must say, uh, for their stability. Not only their stability, but their speed. When most of the ship takes two full days to cross the drag passage, in most of the crossing of the Drake, we were already reaching the South Shetland on the second day in the afternoon. So we could include have an additional visit. And uh, as an, uh, a recommendation, of course, the seasickness pills are of a great help. I have noticed that the pouches most of the guests are using can have a drawback effect. When you remove them, it seems that some of our guests got all the seasickness altogether <laughs> released in one moment. 
So those are some very strong chemical that uh, should be carefully assessed before we decide to take them because once again, the crossing of the drake is not as bad as it can be anticipated. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Jean Rock. Uh, one last question, and we'll close it up. Was related to about the things not to bring. I think there was a question about that, and maybe a little bit more specifics on that one. Okay, perfect. So, uh, what not to bring? The first uh, uh, advice I will have: remember that our your guests are going to take the parkas we gave them back home, and it's common that the guests, unfortunately, would like but cannot take them because they don't have room in their suitcase. So, it's a good idea to tell them not to overpack. There is not that many need of clothing when you go to Antarctica. The uh, ski pants, uh, you don't need shoes, boots, I mean big outer boots. The ski pants don't take too much place and you just need some simple warm layers for the outdoor activities and then uh, some uh, regular uh, sports smart, smart uh, clothing uh, to be on board the ship. So you can travel relatively light. Uh, what we recommend, yes, is to prevent from uh, taking uh, products like shampoos and uh, uh, other beauty products that contain this microplastic. And the thing is that if it's not indicated as an um, uh, uh, organic product, there is very likely some microplastic in it. Microplastic are just inviting themselves in all our shampoos and everything. Those microplastic are causing a lot of damage on the environment. They are just simply replacing the plankton the whales are feeding on. So this is why we prefer to avoid to bring all the shampoos, all those products and use the one we are providing on the ship. I think it's also important to note that you really won't be bringing anything ashore with you other than you know, your hat, your gloves, the parka that you're wearing, your camera, if you have a camera, and your phone, because most people use their phone for their cameras, but there's really nothing else that you're going to bring ashore with you or be permitted to bring ashore with you. Um, but those of you who have nice cameras, um, you could bring a, um, a small waterproof bag that you can put your camera in to, to bring that along with you. Um, but other than that, you really don't need anything to go ashore besides what you're wearing um, and something to, to make memories with. All right, well, Jason, if there are no other questions, I think you did a great job behind the scenes of answering things for us. Thank you so much. But if there are no other questions, I'll just wrap things up by saying we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to learn a little bit more about our product. I really wanna thank Jean Rock for coming on. I think it's just um, amazing to have firsthand experience from our expedition team leader. Uh, to come on and talk to us specifically about it. it. It makes all the difference for us, and we really do appreciate that. Um, so thank you so much.